are you? Hey, how's it going, Sophie? Good, happy to see you. I've had a lovely two weeks being traveling to Mallorca and Scotland. Just got back last night and it's a slight temperature difference from Scotland to Surrey. Um, but very happy to be here and excited to give you guys the final part of my home tour. We're going to be finally getting round to a tour of my dressing room. For all of those of you who've been asking, I want to show you around the whole room, show you inside my wardrobes, how I organise everything and some of my favourite key pieces of my wardrobe. So come on in. about what you're wearing. So I am wearing a dress from Lily Silk. I just got this, absolutely love it, timeless piece. I tend to keep all my clothes forever, so I feel like this is gonna be a key staple for my summer wardrobe. Um, like I say, it's from Lily Silk, and they are today's video sponsor. It's their 12th anniversary, and they're loved by celebrities all over. Gwyneth Paltrow wears it, and Hathaway. So I figure if it's good enough for Gwyneth, I need to get some more of it in my wardrobe. But I'm gonna show you some more stuff upstairs, follow me. They do these amazing scrunchies that are made of silk, which helps them to be zero waste because they use any of the scraps of the material, the leftover from their clothing range and turn it into accessories like silk eye masks or scrunchies. These are silk pajamas and they don't just come in navy. I am having a bit of a navy day today, but they also come in lots of other gorgeous colors, which I'm planning on buying after I've seen how amazing these feel. My next pick from the Lily Silk collection is this silk shirt dress, which is perfect for work. I love wearing a shirt dress, especially in silk, because it just feels so nice in your skin, it keeps you really cool. I could wear this all day, from work meetings in the morning to lunch in the afternoon. So welcome to my wardrobe. This is my favorite room in the house. It's where I come to get some peace and quiet and I get ready in here every morning and then de-stress after a long day at night. For those of you who might have seen some of our other house tours, you'll know it's just off my bedroom. Um, I have a separate dressing room for my husband, which has definitely been a key to our happy marriage. This is where I start my day, every morning at my dressing table. This one is from Oka and I'll link it in the description box if it's still available. I did buy it 10 years ago and I'd customized it a little bit actually because I do love doing a little bit of customization. I had a slightly darker gold, it's more of an antique brass finish to the legs. This is slightly more sort of bright gold when I bought it and then I changed the handles to these ones by Armac Martin. Um, I just feel like handles are so important. You touch them every day, you need to make sure that they feel really good quality. Um, but I love this table, it's faux char green. I don't like to have real char green furniture in my house, it just doesn't sit well with me. Um, but it's a really, really good char, faux char green and really hard wearing. If you spill makeup on it, you can just wipe it clean really easily. For those um, who don't know, explain to you what char green is. Okay, char green is um, stingray skin, so essentially it's like a type of leather, it's stingray skin, and you can see even with the faux char green, what they tend to do is they cut out the middle section where it has like the spine, because it gets this interesting pattern when you polish it off. Um, and then it, like when you get furniture that's made of real char green, it has this sort of panelled effect. Um, so they've copied the same idea for the faux. Um, but yeah, I love stingrays, so I can't bring myself to have stingray skin furniture in my house. I'd rather have the faux stuff instead. This, um, again, you might have seen this before, this is a mirror that I've designed with Armac Martin. Beautifully made, all handmade in England, in this antique brass, beautiful. And it's a great size, you can like see your whole face when you're doing your makeup. And then I've got this slightly smaller one, which has a magnifying mirror on one side and then normal mirror on the other. Do you want me to do that again so I'm not pointing that at you? You're absolutely killing it. <laughs> okay. um, and actually really excitingly, I told you I just got back from my holiday yesterday. I was on EasyJet and I bought the latest house and garden and I had no idea that this was in here. I was just flicking through. And here it is. The brass vanity mirror is one of the three Claremont designs by Sophie Patterson for Armac Martin. This one costs um, £595. I know it's not cheap, but like I said, it, honestly, this weighs a ton. It's solid brass, and the material of solid brass is so expensive, um, and it's also handmade in the UK. It's not mass-produced. 
Um, but I'm really, really proud of these two mirrors and I love having them on my own dressing table. And then um, also on my dressing table, I have um, some photo frames. This one is by Addison Ross. A really cute picture of Ava when she was a baby. Love that. And Mr. P, of course. This was on a holiday in Palm Beach a few years ago. Um, and then I actually need to get one of Oscar because he's missing from my table, but I'll get one of him as well. And then my favorite perfume, this, I cannot pronounce it, is Faguia Patagonia, Biblioteca de ba Babel. And it smells amazing. Like I always love a perfume that smells like a Catholic church. I'm not religious, um, but I love visiting Catholic churches and smelling all the incense. I love the fact this like smells of leather and tobacco and just like really masculine smells is my sort of vibe that I like. Um, let's get inside the drawer, shall we? <laughs> oh, we're not quite ready. <laughs> just hide my secret snacks on my phone. This is my junk drawer that you don't need to have too much of a good look at, but I actually had um, a massive declutter. So I was getting ready this morning, so I shoved a few things. Um, with a company called Organized, great name. They're two girls, um, Haley and Gemma, and they organized my two garages, which were literally like hoarder's paradise with me. And then they came into my dressing room and I had so much anxiety about doing this process because I am a really tidy person, but I'm a collector and I hold on to things. And I also hate like showing my mess. Um, so on the morning that they were meant to come, I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I'm gonna have to cancel. There's so many other things I should be doing. But I took a whole week holiday from work just to do this and genuinely it was one of the best things I've ever done. And it saves me so much time. So they've implemented all of this organization. Got some jewelry in here as well, which shouldn't be there. Um, but you can see like they've, I got these little plastic containers and I'll link these in the description box below because I use them everywhere in my kitchen, everywhere. Um, sorry, this is not really camera ready. It looks a little bit messy, but they've labeled them eyes, face brushes, lips, blush and bronze, concealer, eyeshadow. And this was just like a jumbled mess in the morning before, whereas now I, I'm not joking, I can do my makeup in like two minutes because I know where everything is. Just do it really, really quickly and then shut the drawer. When I was designing this mirror collection, I actually based the dimensions on this, on like um, what I thought would be the ideal mirror shape, but I did three, so I've done a big panelled one as well. Um, Ollie, you can probably share the link and some footage of that. Um, but I chose this one for my own room because um, you can see I've got this beautiful wallpaper. This is from Fermentel and it's all hand painted and hand embroidered. And I didn't want to have a really big mirror that was going to cut off this bird up here because I love sitting here in the morning. And even though I've lived with this wallpaper for probably about four years, I still sit and admire it every day. Every time I walk past it, I just can't get over the incredible skill that's you know, someone has hand stitched all of these little beautiful details. It's such a special thing to have. And um, so that's why I have relatively sort of mid-sized mirror, even though it's quite a big room. If you follow us on Instagram, um, Sophie Patterson Interiors, or you've been on our website, you'll notice that when we do wardrobe doors, we very rarely just do a timber door. I find them quite boring, quite cold and oppressive. So this being my own house was a bit of an experiment to see if it was something that was practical to use in clients' homes. And it's actually a fabric wrapped door. And then we just have these custom made antique brass handles. I wanted to see how practical it would be, you know, with the vacuum banging it occasionally. Um, I did this pre-kids, probably wouldn't have done it after having kids, you live and learn. Um, but actually it's not been too bad. My kids are really, really good. Touch wood, they've never actually got pens and drawn on the walls yet. So. Um, I live in hope that it will stay that way. Um, I kind of don't want to be showy offy because I hate it when people are really sort of materialistic, but this is my weakness and I do love a shoe and bag. Um, so for those of you that have been asking to see inside, this is for you. Let's start with the favorite. So all the um, shelves, they pull out, oops, there goes my bag. This was a bag that my husband bought me four years ago, I think, um, for my birthday. It's a Fendi Spy and I just absolutely love it. Again, it's a classic. You can wear this for work um, and transition to the evening for dinner or out for lunch. Um, love all the hand stitching on that. I always take one of these with me 
and it's basically a handbag clip. You clip it on the table when you go out to lunch and then your handbag hangs from it because I cannot stand when people put their bag on the floor. It's so unhygienic and just not the right way to look after your bag. So this one is Aspinall of London. My sister bought it for one of my birthdays, I think, um, but I pop that in whichever bag I'm taking out with me. These three are my pride and joy. This was my first Hermes bag that I think I bought about six years ago. Super practical, um, love the taupe colour, it's my favourite colour. Um, I'm not really a Hermes huge aficionado, so I think this is called Togo leather, which is quite a soft leather, it's quite pliable. Um, but because it's a casual bag, I like the fact that it's kind of comfortable to wear. Next one I got was this one, and I got this the day I had Oscar. It was a present from me to me, um, a little push present for myself. Um, this is the Kelly, and again, I love, I think they call this leather gold, and it's also in the Togo. Um, but I love the size of this one, so this is probably the one that I wear the most. Um, and if there are people that love Hermes bags, they're probably going to be cringing at how I store these, because I think I should probably have kind of an insert. Um, and then this was my latest one, which is the Birkin, the Holy Grail. Um, and I feel like that's the complete set that I need now because that's all the neutrals. This is in a kind of quite unusual grey colour, um, but it's a slightly bigger bag. Um, so I don't tend to wear it as much because I don't like to take a heavy bag with me. And to be honest, I'm wearing them a lot, lot less because I know so many people that have been mugged um, in London, unfortunately, for their watches and bags. So now I'm super low key in London. I don't wear any jewellery. Um, and I just wear like a high street bag because um, being mugged is pretty traumatic. I won't show you all of them because it's going to it's the wrong channel for that. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't just love interiors, I love fashion too. Um, Chanel bag, this one I got last winter and I do wear a lot of grey. So I love wearing this with like a grey cashmere dress or grey jumper with some jeans. Um, really good size and I love the fact you can wear it with like the short handle or the long handle. This was my first ever designer bag. My husband bought this for me. We've been together 18 years. I think he must have bought it about 17, 16 years ago. Just the classic flap, got a little bit of biro, unfortunately. Um, but again, absolutely love it. And it's something that I'll keep forever. Quite an unusual color for me, this kind of dusty pink, um, but it works really well for like summer weddings and summer events. So I tend to wear that at least a lot in the summer. And then this is really cute. People have seen this in the garden tour video before and asked me about it. It's by Anya Hinmarsh. I love monogrammed everything. I've got a monogrammed linen collection with Coes. All my friends joke that if they stay still long enough, I'll monogram them. Um, so this is definitely one of my go-to bags in the summer. You can just chuck stuff in. Um, I'm really, really cute. I love the size of it. And then, at the other end of the spectrum, this bag I've had for about 10 years and it's just a really cheap beach basket and I love it. There's something so chic and understated about this. I wear it not only on the beach, but in the summer or at the weekend when I'm with the kids, if I'm going to the market or when I buy flowers, you can fit everything in it. Um, and I think this looks really nice with like a white shirt, some jeans and some white trainers. Or if you're on the beach, obviously with a bikini. Um, and then shoes. So I, as I mentioned, after I had Oscar, my feet went from a size 39, which I've been all my life, um, all my adult life, to a size 40. And I kept thinking, they're gonna shrink back, they're gonna go back, they didn't. So finally, um, about six months ago, I faced facts that I was gonna have to let a lot of shoes go that I'd loved. We're talking Chanel, Gian Vito Rossi, all my favorite brands. Um, and I gave them to charity. One of my friends was doing a huge charity launch for Oasis Children's Charity. Again, I'll put the link in the description box. So it felt good to sort of get rid of them and know that they were going for a good cause. And she, I think she raised, not just from me, but like she had a lot of friends donate a lot of designer items. The kind of items that you normally think would be too good to give to charity, that was what she was looking for. Um, and I think she raised 55,000 pounds and it, um, it all goes to support um, children that are in sort of vulnerable situations that might go into care in and around Surrey. So although it was painful to let go of some of my favorite shoes that I'd had for, you know, 10 years and spent a lot of money on, it felt good knowing that it was going to raise money for a good cause. So ones that I've got left, these are probably my favorites. These are Gian Vito Rossi, um, such a good classic 
shoe and a really nice hill hike. I can't wear really high hills anymore. I'm turning into an old granny. These ones, again, I love tan, tan everything I love. Jim Beto Rossi and the good hill height. And then I just bought these um, in the gray suede. They have kind of a lilac color as well. And I've also got them in the dark green. And they're kind of my go-to shoes. If I'm doing work meetings with clients, I can wear them. And um, if I'm going out for lunch, I can wear them for that as well. These ones, Aquazura, just such a cool shoe. I love this with like a pencil skirt. And then down here, we've got some of my flats. You might have seen these on screen before. I've spoken about these. These are Stubbs and Wooten. I got them in Palm Beach when I was having lunch with a friend. So comfortable. They're literally like wearing a pair of slippers, and I do love some leopard print. I think you dubbed them as man repellent this time. They are definitely man. They repel my husband so much, but I think he's come to terms with the fact that I need a little bit of leopard print in my life. Um, and then the classic Chanel pumps. Again, love these. They go so nicely with the gray bag and really good for work. And these are a new one, Roger Vivier. Again, a bit of a man repeller. My husband thinks they are really granny, but I quite like them. They remind me of the Manolo Blahnik shoes. I can't remember what they're called. I think they're called Hangisi or something. Um, but I couldn't, I actually took um, Ollie to the Manolo Blahnik shop, but I just couldn't come to terms with the idea of having most of my foot not in a shoe. It felt like it was gonna fall out. And so I got these instead, but they're a little bit scuffed. Um, so yeah, it's my shoes. And then also in terms of storing them, when I travel, um, I always make sure that I use these little shoe inserts so that the shoe doesn't crash. And I will share the link for those down below. They're really nice, lightweight. Although the wooden ones look nice in your wardrobe, you will be like over the weight restriction for your suitcase if you put them in there. So these are a really good lightweight option. And um, this is slightly more casual. And um, some of my other favorite bags are Goyards. And I tend to use the Goyard, I think this is called Artois bag, rather than like the classic one that's completely open. Again, just because I've been mugged years and years ago, I had someone take some stuff out of my bag without me even realizing. So I tend to always use bags that have a zip, which this style does. And it's a good size, it's not too big, so it doesn't become too heavy. And um, this one is just a Zara bag, I think. Oh, whistles. Again, I love that, the contrast and the different colors of leather with the tan and the white. I've got quite a few hats and then just trainers. Loads and loads of trainers because I'm a mum and I live in trainers. I've got another pair of man repellers. These, my husband was like, is this a joke? Um, but I grew up in Holland and I love a clog because I spent the first 12 years of my life there. These are by Ancient Greek Sandals and they're they're a bit clunky, I have to say. Like when I put them on and I walk down the stairs, everyone knows I'm coming because it's like thunk, thunk, thunk. Um, but I'm persevering because I don't want him to be right. And I do love how they look. And I keep going on Pinterest and finding really cool outfits um, that other women have worn with the clogs. So in here I have all my dresses. And I also have, and this is something that I always recommend. I'm just opening this and realizing there's loads of fingerprints on this mirror but um, I have a double mirror on a pair of wardrobes and that's so good because you can stand there and s I angle it and see all angles of your outfit before you leave the house. So if you have a pair of wardrobes, make sure you put two mirrors. That's my top tip. What are some of your favorite outfits here, so? Um, this, I tend to keep dresses, not just because I like them, but they have happy memories. So I don't like hold on to them if I'm never gonna wear them, apart from like my wedding dress. Um, but this one I love, this is by Amelia Wickstead and I bought it for Brett and Anthony's um, wedding, I think that must be like four years ago. Um, and I just love the fabric, it's so beautiful, this sort of metallic lace, and it kind of, you put it on, it holds you in. Um, and I think it's a classic, but also I love the fact that it's got happy memories. Um, in here somewhere, I've got my wedding dress as well. Oh, this is my, all my dresses that I have a good time in get completely wrecked. So this was the dress that I wore my engagement party with Kevin. So we've been married 14 years. Um, so this is 16 years old. This is Amanda Wakely. Um, and we had a party at his family home in Edinburgh. Like you can see it's absolutely shredded. People kept stepping on my dress all night because we just danced all night. Um, so I'll never wear it again, but I'm not throwing it out because it's just such happy memories. His mum throws an amazing party like hostess of the mostest and she got um, these waiters 
there are also opera singers. So they're like serving you canapes and drinks and then all of a sudden they break into the most amazing opera singing um, and they serenaded me and I had no idea that she'd done that so it was a really nice surprise. And then in here is my wedding dress. Now I didn't get it dry clean so it's a little bit discoloured but I didn't get it dry clean because as you can see it's super beaded. This is Jenny Packham. I loved it. I was a really young bride. I think I was like 24 when I got married. Um, so I was very slim and I feel like it's the perfect dress to wear when you have like the figure that you have in your early 20s. Um, but I got a quote for it to be dry cleaned because again it's a little bit wrecked at the bottom and it was £800 and I thought you know what I think I'll keep £800 and buy like five more dresses <laughs> and that's my veil and actually Ava loves um, every year. We have this little tradition where we watch our wedding video, which I don't think I can even let you watch, Ollie, because it's painfully bad. Um, but again, just love it because it's got happy memories and it's nice for the kids to see us getting married. But Ava loves watching it. Then she'll come up here, she'll put on my wedding dress, um, and then she'll go downstairs with just my veil on, because obviously the dress is too big for her. She's just about to turn six and um, Daddy has to marry her, and then Oscar has to marry her, so she walks down the aisle. Um, but I don't think this is ever going to get worn again. Is there any particular memories of that? Um, one that people always laugh and take the mickey out of me for is that I'm not actually, I'm so glad I got married at 24, because now I think if I got married, it would just, you know, with Pinterest and Instagram, the pressure on brides and grooms and whoever's getting married is like so intense to make it like Instagram worthy and perfect. But back then I was quite laid back. For me, <laughs> obviously still was into like interiors and beautiful flowers. But as I was walking down the aisle, I organized the wedding all by myself. And I remember sort of like clocking as I'm walking down the aisle towards Kevin, I'm like, yep, yeah, Kev, perfect perfect and then I'm like clocking the flowers, clocking the lights, candles blah, blah, blah. And, and the video captures all that you can see my eyes sort of like ticking off things off my list as I'm walking down the aisle and they're like only you would be like checking that the details are right as you're walking down the aisle. But I have so many happy memories on the day I remember just feeling Kevin always says like that was the calmest he's ever felt in his entire life like he just felt so in his body so grounded like he was in the right place at the right time thank God, um, and I just felt euphoric. I remember dancing to Candy Statham, um, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, sometimes you wanna put your hands up in the air, that one, on the dance floor, and just, you know, sometimes I'm having a really happy moment, I just tell myself, like, mentally screenshot this, I'm an old granny, because I wanna remember this, and I just felt like that about the whole day, I just felt so, so happy. Um, it goes so fast, doesn't it? It goes so fast, and I always say to, someone gave me great advice, um, before we got married um, that you should disappear for just 15 minutes at some point in your wedding day not for photos but just sit with your partner and have a glass of champagne or whatever it is you like to drink and just sit away in a quiet corner and watch people at your own wedding because it just really slows down time and it helps you sort of take it all in and we did that and actually that was like such a good piece of advice because it's so hard to soak in your own wedding day. Everyone wants to talk to you. You've got to make sure that you're like going around saying hi to everyone. Um, and sometimes you don't even spend that much time with your husband or your wife or your partner. And um, I remember from our engagement party that happened because we had so many people there. And so we kind of learned from that. Although we enjoyed it, we wanted to make sure that we soaked in our wedding day together and we spent as much time together on the day as possible. Um, so let's have a look in the island. Now this was the last addition to this room. Before I had this here, I had a big um, purple ottoman, which I liked the way it looked. And when I designed the room, I had this vision that I'd have like friends in here and eventually, hopefully, if I had a daughter, she would sit in here and we'd chat while I got ready. That never really happened. Basically what would happen is I would bung all my clothes when I was sort of like having a mad panic on a Saturday night couldn't find anything to wear, clothes would end up there and it would just be this pile of clothes as you walk into the room, not looking cute. So now I have this island and it's so good for storage for things like underwear, sports clothes, um, sunglasses, belts, and I designed it so it had like a section for each area. So this is my sunglasses and I think I've shown you guys this before. 
Um, I've got quite a big sunglasses collection, mostly because my brother-in-law is a sunglasses designer. Um, he has a brand called Sean's. Um, these are Sean's. Basically, I don't know why I have so many sunglasses because I only really wear this pair and I've only really worn this pair for the last like seven years. And then what do we have on here? Oh, here's just like some old wallets. And then I have like some costume jewelry in here. Um, this is one of my favorite bracelets and I've worn this before and people have asked me about it. I, it's just from a high street shop. It's called Liz Larios. It's not real gold or anything, but love a chunky gold bracelet. This is a faux leather, which I picked because I thought it would be really practical. And it is a Whistler faux leather. And then very quickly, I started to realize you cannot leave anything on this leather because it was a new product that they had at the time. And I don't know if it was like the treatment they put on it or whatever, but it's kind of a blessing and a curse because I cannot leave anything on it. It soaks the dye out of stuff, um, which means that I have to keep this really tidy. I only have this tray on here, which um, I've kind of protected by putting some cotton wool balls. But even there, you can see it sucked some color out of the tray, so I have to sort of line it up perfectly. So that is really irritating. And in some of these drawers where they're lined in it, you can see like this was a drawer that I used for belts, it sucked the dye out. Um, so if it was a client's project, I would have had to take this entire piece of furniture apart and have it remade with a different leather. But as it's my own dressing room and I'm too busy, I've just learned to live with it. So on this side, I have like all my underwear. I'm not gonna show you those drawers. No one needs to see that. But on this side, I have all my gym outfits. So you can see I've got my gym sweatshirts. I've got a little label there. And the girls from Organized taught me how to sort of roll your items. I think it's a bit like Mary Kondo, where you can see everything. And when I remember when they were doing it, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep this up. But actually, it just, is so much easier, you can see everything and everything looks so nice when you open the, the drawers. These are all my like um, gym tops, gym sports bras, gym leggings. And then finally, I haven't been able to play tennis for a while, but I do love playing tennis. I've got all my tennis whites there. So in here I have all my coats and jackets. Again, they're all kind of organized by um, color. Nothing really of note in here. This was a jacket that I wore um, to Buckingham Palace. Um, it's got a matching skirt, pencil skirt. This is by Roland Murray. I wore that, I think, like five years ago. You obviously go and see the outside of Buckingham Palace, driving in and driving in through those gates and then just seeing like where you see pictures of the royal family, like, you know, that staircase with the carpet and you get dropped off there and you get to walk up the stairs and walking through the corridor, I was just like, wishing that I had like a GoPro on my head so I could just film it all. <laughs> um, very, very surreal, incredible experience. I'd actually like to take the kids back to Buckingham Palace because they open it up in the summer for certain days, like state rooms. Um, but every year I forget to organize it in time. So next year I'll definitely book that because it's such a special place. I'm a huge fan of the Queen. I think that's it. Oh, last thing, I'll just give it a little dust because I'm seeing cobwebs up here is my chandelier, which I think is from Heathfield. Um, and again, I've had that for 10 years. Um, there's nothing quite like filming in your house to realize that you need to do more cleaning. Um, but I still love it. I love the simplicity of it. And I think it works really well. It's got like, all this geometric shape and then it works really well with the metal inlay and the sort of angles on the island, um, which has a kind of art deco influence. And that's it guys. So I hope you've enjoyed a dressing room tour. I am going to do a top 10 design tips video on how to make the most of your dressing room or your wardrobe, everything from storage tips to inspiration from our clients' projects. Um, but I hope that you've enjoyed having a look around my wardrobe and that it's been inspiring or given you some good ideas and I will see you very soon.